the early 1960s, Henry Ford II had a mission. He had dedicated himself to turning Ford into a global automotive power. And to earn that, he set his sights on Le Mans. However, conquering the 24 hours of Le Mans is not for the faint of heart. The 24 hours of Le Mans was being dominated by a force the likes of which had never been seen before. That force was Ferrari. For six straight years, Ferrari had claimed the crown at Le Mans. And with the success of the Scuderia being a point of enormous national pride for the Italians, there was no end in sight. But Henry Ford wanted to win at Le Mans. And almost more importantly, he wanted Ferrari to lose. They initially tried to buy Ferrari. Uh, and it, there's various different stories as to why it didn't work out. Uh, I won't go into all the details, but it failed. And within, I think it was within about six days of the failure of that, Royal Land had proposals on the desk for them to build their own car to go and win and it turned out to be pretty much already uh, what the GT40 turned into. When they tried to purchase Ferrari and that deal kind of fell apart, they decided that they wanted to win the ultimate race and show the Europeans that the Americans could build a car that not only competed, but won. In April 1964, Ford showed the world their answer to Ferrari, the Ford GT. After retiring from numerous events in 64, Ford sought out Carroll Shelby, who had himself won at Le Mans a few years prior to oversee the effort of securing Ford's dominance in global motorsport by taking on the role of executor of Ford's personal vendetta. The difference of opinion between Ford USA and the manufacturers by this time established as FAV with John Wire at the head of it in the UK. At the end of the season, uh, they split it so that FAV would be responsible for the building, but they gave the, the racing uh, side of it to Shelby American. The first thing they did was they said they put them back to the way they had started out, and then they worked from there and they did all their, their work, the work their wonders on it, and then first time out at Daytona, they won uh, with GT40 103. By 1966, Carroll Shelby and the other Ford partners had made great strides in the GT40's reliability and were considered by many to be the favorites to potentially achieve Henry Ford's dream. And by the time they got to Le Mans, having already won Daytona and Sebring, it really was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Henry Ford was the, uh, the, the guest of honour who waved the flag to start the race and in front of him at the end of the race they ended up with the three cars finishing one, two, three. And uh, the, basically the legend of the GT40 was established by that. The finish would go down in history as Ford's first Le Mans victory and historians would recall the events as a complete domination of Ferrari. To the victors go the spoils, but as memories fade and years progressed, controversy would soon arise regarding Ford's decision to stage a 1-2-3 finish. They did get the victory they wanted, they got the publicity they wanted, but they also got something that publicity is short-lived, but controversy isn't, and they got controversy because with the 1-2-3 stage finished, they had found out, they'd been told by the officials that although they decided to stage the 1-2-3 finish, that well, you can't have a dead heat with the two cars side by side because the way among regulations go, it's the distance you cover in the 24 hours, and the car that has therefore qualified further back in the grid will have covered a greater distance if it crosses the line side by side. Because the two cars crossed the line side by side, if that's what they were gonna do, they were warned by the French officials that the car that had qualified further back, in this case 1046, would be the Le Mans winner. Uh, that is the cause of a lot of controversy, because it's as if uh, Ken Miles had been ahead in the last few laps, and then he was suddenly robbed of the victory. It's a very, simple thing that went wrong, but it's a very complex thing to, to explain. In the interview with Ken Miles, he states this to Skip Weston, who's interviewing him, that's not the end of the race. The end of the race is about 300 yards further back down the track. It's the beginning of the pit lane. That's where the sensor was for the for IBM for the, the lap times. And that's where they, when they were asked to do the stage finish, they did the stage finish for. Despite the controversial finish, there was no denying the success of the GT40. In fact, this victory began four straight years that a GT40 would win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. To date, Ford is the only American manufacturer to have won a title at the historic event. Henry Ford II had accomplished his dream and then some, but it was this Ford GT40, chassis 1046, that started it all. Ford's goal with the whole program was to win Le Mans. They wanted to go international racing and they wanted to beat Ferrari. And so this is the car that achieved that goal. Uh, which makes it, in my opinion, the most significant of all the GT40s in that it won the race that they intended to win the first time. Since winning Le Mans, chassis 1046 endured a fate not worthy of the prestige it ushered in for Henry II and his Ford Motor Company. After suffering a transmission failure, chassis 1046, which helped lay waste to the Scuderia at Le Mans, was now relegated to the chores of a test vehicle. Many alterations and undocumented revisions later, this icon had lost its status in the lure of auto racing. 
On paper, its credentials could not be debated, but in metal, this was not the same car which ruined the dreams of Ferrari and helped establish Ford as a perennial leader on a global stage. But the past does not have to remain forever constant. Join RK Motors Charlotte as we revive an icon, unearth the past and restore glory to chassis 1046. This is the real story of the first Ford GT40 to claim Le Mans for America, and we welcome you to be a part of history with us. There really is no controversy. That car won Le Mans.